Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here back from my practice cave and welcome to today's lesson about the incredible style of Chris Poland. Chris Poland was the first lead guitar player for Megadeth and he's kind of, yeah, a little bit underrated when it comes to Megadeth guitar players. Where you see a lot of people are talking about Marty Friedman, Kiko Lorejo, Chris Broderick, and so on and so on. And those players, I love them, they are great. I love Marty, I love Kiko, I love Chris Broderick, but Chris Poland, Chris Poland has something unique in his style. The first time I've realized how great his playing is, it was by listening to the isolated solo tracks from the um, Peace Sells But Who's Buying CD. And I highly recommend everybody to check out those isolated tracks. You can find them on YouTube, they are awesome. His legato playing is so clean, his bendings are so interesting, his note choice are so interesting, it's so, mm, so tastefully and so good. He definitely comes from the fusion kind of side, and he is kind of the first one who made this fusion between fusion, jazz rock fusion, and metal music, especially thrash metal like Megadeth. And this makes his kind of style so unique. So yeah, I hope you will like this lesson. If you want the tabs for those links, then you can download them as usual in the description box. Um, have fun with the lesson. See you there. Cheers. Okay, first we're going to take a look at some legato lines and some legato licks and some scale approaches to see how Chris gets this kind of fusion outside kind of style. All right. Um, the lick I have chosen for this is a combination of uh, the intro lick of Bad Omen and a lick from Devil's Island. And in slow, it goes like this. We are basically in E minor and first I want to talk with you about the fingering and the scale that he is using. Because a really interesting thing about Chris playing is that he is often using the same fingering. And with this kind of approach, he really gets a really nice and interesting kind of fusion sound. So, he is using this kind of fingering. Index, middle and pinky. So we have one half note step and whole tone step. And he's using this fingering from the A to the B string. So let's compare each note to the E to check out which interval we, um, we get when we are using the same fingering on three strings, four strings, on four strings. Okay, we're starting on the ninth fret on the A string, the F sharp, this is the second degree of the E minor scale. Then we have the G, the minor third, A, the fourth, B, the fifth, C, the minor sixth, D, the minor seventh, E, the root, so, so far it's simply basic, everything's still in E minor. But now comes the twist. We have the F now, which is the flat 9, the minor 3rd, the G, the major 3rd, the G sharp, the 4th, 5th, bring to the minor 6th. So we have two notes in this kind of pattern and sequence that are not in the E minor scale the F and the G sharp. But with those two notes in particular, we can get some really interesting tension and some really interesting color notes for the scale. We have two really, really cool uses for this kind of taking one fingering and playing it up to the higher string approach. Um, first of all, it's a bit easier to play it up to tempo because one fingering is easier to mesmerize for a left hand, for a fretting hand, than two or three fingerings. And the other cool thing is that we are starting in the scale, so we have the common scale kind of sound, and then while we are progressing, we are moving more and more out of the scale. A little bit sneaky out of the scale, here the F, there the G sharp, the major third, the flat nine, a little sneaky, but more and more we can get out of the scale and we can get this outside fusion kind of sound that I love from Chris Poland's playing. So we have a really, really great uh, build up with some really 
tension building up and then releasing when we're going back again the scale and so on so on. So this is really incredible. So the sequence that we are playing first is this kind of sequence. <laughs> This sequence is really interesting and really cool because we have a really cool rhythmical approach to this kind of sequence. Normally or most of the time I would play this sequence more like this or I'm more common to play the sequence like this. You know, the classical Paul Gilbert kind of sequence. intense picking. But here we have a little twist and turn in this sequence. We are starting on the 9th fret on the A string, going 9, 10, 12, going to the D string 9, back to the A string, classical Paul Gilbert move, to the 12th fret, but now we are not jumping back to the 10th fret, we are jumping straight to the 9th fret, going back to 10 and 12. This is our sequence. And here we get some really nice rhythmical approach in this kind of 60 note sequence so that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So the note that we are accenting is the note on the D string and on the 60 note patterns it's the, it's the fourth note. So we have an accent on the four. One, two, three, four. Four. <laughs> Whatever. This is also an incredible lick to an incredible sequence to play it up to tempo with our infurious Paul Gilbert kind of picking. <laughs> Okay, when we have reached the E string, we're going to the second kind of sequence, and this sequence goes like this. This is still a 16 note pattern in the 16 note sequence, but we are playing it in the groupings of 3 or 6. How you, it depends how you can look at it. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, or when you are counting it as a 60 note pattern, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the complete legato lick all together. So now we're going to check out some bending stuff from Chris because this is another aspect from his playing which is really interesting. And here you can clearly hear his influence on his playing when it comes to the phrasing, which is Jan Hammer. If you don't know Jan Hammer, Jan Hammer is not a guitar player. Jan Hammer is a keyboard player, mostly known for playing with John McLaughlin and playing the Miami Vice soundtrack and stuff like this. So he's, a, he's an 80s fusion keyboard player. And you can clearly hear in Chris playing how he's influenced by those pitch band, wheel bands, wheel pitch kind of stuff from the keyboards player, pulling wow with the wow wheel on the left side of the keyboard, which I also really love. And how he's influenced on this with phrasing, because the phrasing is a little bit different. Keyboard player are using this to imitate guitar players, but the phrasing is different, the approach is different. So um, the phrasing sounds a little bit different and Chris is influenced or is trying to imitate those keyboard player trying to imitate those guitar players. So it's kind of a phrasing inception story. But now what is Chris doing in particular? One lick he's often playing is this kind of lick. Yeah. 
this lick is basically consists out of two notes. The first note is the B, played on the 12th fret on the B string. The second note is the A, played on the 14th fret on the G string. And the third note is again the A, but it's bended from the 13th fret on the G string. Half note bent to the A. So we have... So, and from the right hand we have sweep, a pull-off and the pull-off transforms into the bending. And another really great bending approach from Chris Poland is his control over his bendings. He makes some really, really wide bendings. For example, from the minor third of, let's say, E to the fifth of the E. So it's bending from two whole notes. <laughs> this is really incredible. Oh, even, not, even higher. Ah! Ouch! It can hurt a bit when you're not used to play this kind of wide bendings. Um, <laughs> but that's not all. We are not ending here, where he is also a master and is controlling those bendings. So he's playing lines like a minor third from E, fifths, diminished fifths, going to the fourth. This kind of line, but he's doing it with the bend release technique. And it's especially pretty hard when you want to bend it right after a scale run. For example, let's, our, let's take our sequence from the beginning, this one, and we're doing it like... Oh, sorry. It's so much fun to play. It's so incredible and it sounds so awesome. I love this kind of sound. It's really hard. You have to really work on this to get this clean or tight. I have to work on this and I want to work on this to have this clean and tight because I love the sound. And as I've said in the beginning, I clearly didn't have um, Chris on my radars, on my, on my map so far. Uh, because of you, you've always listening to Marty and to Kiko and to Chris Broderick and stuff like this and Chris Poland from the beginning days and from um, the System Has Failed CD. Um, the solos are short, but what he is playing there, it's so tasty. It's so incredible. It's so unique. His sound, his style, his technique. I love it. I hope you will love this too. And I hope you love and like this lesson and this video. It was a lot of fun to make this. Feel free to, feel free to subscribe, to comment and to show, uh, share. <laughs> I have to practice now going back to my practice cave um, to get prepared for the next video and to learn some more Chris, Chris Poland licks. So I hope I'm going to see you in the next video. Cheers.